Uh, my name is Steve Fender. I'm from Fender's Fish Hatchery, and we've been established here in Ohio since 1956. And we are pond stockers, and we also help people manage their ponds and give them advice how to keep their ponds clean. One of the ways we keep these ponds clean is by, as far as keeping vegetation out, is by using grass carp, or also known as white aimers. And the reason for this video isn't so much to tell you how grass carp work as much as clearing up a few myths or rumors that have been circulating over the years about white aimers. There are certain people who would like to see these things uh, not legal because they're concerned that they could, they could destroy the environment for fish that's already there by eating too much vegetation. So these are things that I want to touch on in this video a little bit. One of the myths are is that, the, that a white aimer, a triploid white aimer, can revert back to diploid white aimer. First I want to explain to you a little bit how they become diplo uh, triploids to begin with. So in 1987 when they came legal in the state of Ohio, the stipulation was they had to be triploid white aimer. And what a triploid white aimer is, is a fish has been genetically changed and, and they're all sterile females. The process behind this is they take the eggs from the female, fertilize them with the male, and they, they put these eggs underneath extreme pressure and this, this stress causes these eggs to become to form an extra set of chromosomes and become triploid white aimer. So they hatch the eggs out, check the, the babies, and to make sure that these little fry all seem to be mostly all triploid. Take those fry, put them in a lake, let them grow up until they're about 12 inches long. We sell fish as a 10 to 12 incher. And when the farmer sends these out, and these are all coming out of Arkansas, when the farmer sends these out and they get them ready to ship up to the Fender's Fish Hatchery in Ohio, the fish are brought in the building, they're tranquilized, knocked out. Every fish has a blood sample taken from them and they're, they're checked. And this, this blood sample is ran through a machine that will show that these are triploid white aimer. Now, after they tested all these fish, whether it's 300 or 600 or 1,000, however many they are, every single fish gets checked. Now, the state of Arkansas, or that's actually the federal government, uh, sends in a representative that will randomly check so many of those fish to make sure that there's no diploids mixed in. Now, if they find one diploid in that batch, the farm gets fined and the whole batch has to be retested again. And if this happens more than three times, they will take their license away from them. So this has to be done right in order to make it legal. One myth is that they can revert from triploid back to diploid to become a sterile fish. This can't happen. This is, a, this is the DNA that this fish has been, has been born with or hatched with, and this can't happen. It can't change. So that's one myth. Um, another myth is that once it gets so big, they quit eating vegetation, or they don't eat as much vegetation. Uh, this is not true either. The bigger they get, the more vegetation they eat. They quit eating when they die. Common sense, simple as that. The way the fish works is that first year you don't see a lot of effects. The second year they start to you notice an impact. Third year they start to really do the job and you're good for the next 18, 20 years. The amount you stock per acre dictates how much vegetation you're going to control. <clears throat> These fish last a long time. Theoretically, what happens, the reason it looks like they're not controlling the vegetation after they get old is when you only need 8 to 12 aimers per acre on an average to control the vegetation and you have a fish that's going to work for 20 years, several things can happen to make it appear that they're not controlling the vegetation anymore. And one of them is when you only need 8 or 12 to the acre to do the job, if you have 2 or 3 die off in that period of 20 years, that sometimes could be enough to offset the control to where the vegetation starts to get ahead of them. Another situation happens, you look over a period of 20 years, if there's nothing done to control that vegetation, as, if, well, there's nothing done to control the fertility rate to help to control the vegetation. As the pond gets older, fertility rates will go up. So if you're not using any kind of variation or bacteria or anything to control that, the vegetation will, become the, will start to grow more aggressively. New ponds grow vegetation, old ponds grow up better because of the difference in, veg, in the uh, fertility. So it isn't that the aimers have quit eating or are not eating as much as they get older. It's the fact that you may have lost a few of that batch of aimers that you got or your fertility rates have just gotten high enough that now the vegetation is growing faster than what they can control. An interesting fact about these fish, you know, they call them grass carp. They're actually in the minnow family. This is just a giant minnow. If you look at that fish, they have a minnow mouth and then they have the body shape of a minnow. They really don't resemble a regular carp other than the big scales. They don't have that sucker mouth, they don't have the barbs in their mouth, and they don't have that more round figure that you see on, in, on, a, uh, on a carp. Um, they also talk about some of the experts or the environmentalists who say that they found DNA 
that shows that there's diploid white amers in the rivers and streams of, of uh, you know, up and around the Great Lakes area. This could be very true, but nobody's ever found any of the DNA of the fertile fish in, in, compound, in um, farm ponds or lakes or, or anything that's um, contained water sources. In other words, they're not flowing, the river's not flowing into them. So private lakes and bodies of waters that have been stocked with the, with the grass carp, there's never been any evidence of any kind of reproduction or anything like that. The DNA that they're finding in the rivers is very possible that these fish have swam from the southern waters and gotten up into here. So that is a possibility that could have happened. Uh, these fish were actually native to Eastern Asia. They've been over here since the early 60s. And they brought them over to help control vegetation. They're commonly a food fish over in, in Asia and, other, and they're raised all over the world for food. But here in the United States, we choose to use them for vegetation control. They do a very good job. They have to be applied properly and you know, give them enough time and, and enough numbers, they'll do a good job and they'll control the vegetation. So these are just myths that I wanted to hit on. One of the sources you can, or resources you can use, if you go to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and you'll actually find the link to that on our website, you, you hit on that and you'll find information from the government that talks about the myths that, that are out there and how the aimers actually, the grass carp actually work. So these are good fish that do a very good job. And quite honestly, this is our options. We either use a grass carp to control vegetation or use chemicals. In my opinion, I'm, I would much rather use natural alternatives to control vegetation than I would, would use chemicals. chemicals. Chemicals are expensive, they're messy, and sometimes they don't work and other times they work too good. I saw a lot of fish to guys that uh, have used chemicals at the wrong time of the year or use them or they've used them wrong and they've killed their fish. So using chemicals can be very messy and very difficult. So grass carp has worked for us since 1987. Uh, they live to be over 20 years old and they're effective. They do a good job. So here again, you can check out the rest of our videos on our website, Google Fenders Fish Hatchery. Go to www.fendersfishhatchery.com. If you have any questions, give us a call. Thank you.